Oh, well, thank you for lending me this shirt. Looks yes. like a bit of a wardrobe malfunction there, Janet Jackson. What well, do you think? I had, uh, you know, I'm feeling a little chilly. Yeah. A little, spilled a little chilly so inside You went to Salina Tintinani and got yourself a jacket. That's right. And this didn't come from Headley's, so I guarantee that. No, it didn't. That's so one of our... Headley has more sophisticated clothing than this. That's right. That's that right. That's she'll be telling us, huh? That's right. Hello, and welcome to your old news update. I'm Izzy Fitz. And I'm Bud Driscoll. Bud Driscoll, and we're going to shout out to our sponsors. We're going to give top billing to Glenn Headley, Headley's Clothing, right. 1829 South 9th, shirt by Glenn. Shirt and not by Glenn. Not by Glenn. And uh, Smoky Hill Museum is another sponsor at 211 West Iron, and Eagle Crest Retirement Community, 1501 East Magnolia. We're going to top the headlines from yesteryear. Yes, we'll take the Wayback Machine back to March 8th, 1987, where there was a visit by rock guitarist Steve Morse. Who is he, may you ask? Well, he was voted the best overall guitarist of the last five years by readers of Guitar Player Magazine. Imagine that. But he came down to the amateur level Saturday at a seminar in Salina. Now, Morse was the rock guitarist, or may still be, with the rock group Kansas. Are they mm. still around? All right. Well, they're getting old. Uh, getting a little long in the tooth, if I you know. know what I mean. Well, he was in town for the band's concert Saturday night in the Bicentennial Center, and about 2,840 people attended the show. That was pretty good attendance. <laughs> Most pretty of them probably don't remember it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't take their memory pills. Mm -hmm. March 11th, 1937. Headlined by, I love this name, Ephraim Zimbalist. Mm -hmm. World famous... Violinist, the 56th annual Messiah Festival opens in Lindsborg on Palm Sunday, March 21st, when the wildly, widely known Bethany College Chorus will give Handel's Messiah for the 163rd time. Mm. Must have they must have eclipsed 200 by now. Hagbard Braz will or Braz. Bra how do you pronounce that name? He will direct, and Arvid Wallen will accompany. I'm sure you have a lot of Swedish people calling you and telling you how you're I'm, mispronouncing I, all these names. I believe Swedish I names. might be in trouble. Yeah, I'm sure his name is a Braz. Yeah, Braz. Well, maybe. Well, Braz, you do a hand. Or Brazé. Brazé. Well, I'm blasé about the whole thing. So yes. Moving let's on. go back to uh, March 5th, 1912. Oh, this is a sad but true story. <sighs> A.C. Moore, uh, alias Professor C. Almo, um, clairvoyant. He's uh, a clairvoyant. That means he can see into the future mm. and tell what hasn't happened yet, kind of like we do. wonder if he could see us. wonder uh, if he could see yesternews way I back don't in know, 1912. 1912. Who knows? Well, and Frank White, the professor's assistant and advertising manager, were arrested by the police last night or in jail on the complaint of V.W. Alderson of Salina, who claims he is short six $100 bills as a result of their work. Big bucks in them days. 100 big bucks in these days, too. Yeah, that's I half six a one, I had six $100 bills. You uh, could, that's like a week's pay for you. That's a half a tank of gas. Yeah. Alderson was one of his clients and said that Almo promised him to sell, promised to help him sell some land in Oklahoma that's at a certain way. price for a $25 fee. Well, Mr. Alderson agreed to this plan, and then the clairvoyant told him that to produce the desired result, ooh, he must get six $100 bills at once, and after putting them in an envelope to wear them, after putting them in an envelope to wear them suspended around his neck on a string for a week. Hmm. <laughs> he was then to report to Almo's office last night. The professor took off the envelope and said it would be necessary to put some writing with them and leave them in a book for a few minutes. Mm. Then came the magic words and the burning of sacred candles, and Mr. Alderson was given an envelope from the book and told to go home and return Thursday morning. For some reason, he had misgivings in his mind. I can <laughs> a likely why. story. He took off the magic envelope and found a choice selection of blank pieces of paper. He then wisely notified the police, and Marshal Meyer and Officer Richardson responded. Oh, oh, oh. My clairvoyant is kicking in. We have an update. Yeah, that's pretty good. Turn the page there, bud. This is the next right day. There. In March 11, 1912, an update. The preliminary hearing of Professor C. Almo, the clairvoyant, uh -huh. which was to have been held in Judge Wagstaff's court this morning, has been postponed till next Monday morning. Almo is held under the charge of having secured $600 from... Ver I think it's Virgil, not Virgin. Virgin, yeah, Virgin. Virgil. Alderson, little, Alderson little last editing there. Yeah, 
last week on the pretext of having wonderful powers over real estate transfers. The money has been recovered and Almo is being held on a grand larceny charge. No. And try to think your way what out of that. Buddy. I wonder if he could have pre predicted it. I don't know. Did he, did he see stripes in his future? Well, we may have an update on this in the future. Who knows? Stay tuned. Dateline Fallen. March 9, 1912, Fallen is staring a coal famine in the face. If this weather keeps up, much longer. Citizens are hoping that the weather will soon moderate. Everyone seems to be short of feed, and many cattle will have to go to the pastures early in April, as there is no other way out of the situation. Oh, well, Professor C. Almo could probably help him, but he's in jail. Yep, we have oh, to well. bail him out, I or know. break him out in them days. Mm -hmm. Read more about the way things used to be in the look back section of Monday's Salina Journal. Now you have a great weekend, and ooh, we'll see you yesterday. Ooh. <laughs>